What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Lit, the mastermind. Welcome back to another episode of My Life is Awesome. Now, I have someone who may match my energy. All right, y'all? It's the first time on the show I can say that, but we got my boy, B Roots, the Moon King in the house. How are you doing, bro? What's up? What's up? What's <laughs> up? It's your boy, who, 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 B Roots. And this time I am finally, what well, I am a little bit upset though, man. I didn't get my true intro. My, my, my life is awesome intro. I'm a little upset about it, but, you know, I'll take it where I can take it, you know. <laughs> What's going on, man? It's a good time. Good yeah, time it's, to see you, man. It's, 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 it's good time to be in crypto. Um, finally, it's cool enough to say, man, I'm finally on Lit Show. <laughs> how, have, how long have you been tuning in, bro? To my Since life the is awesome. days, man. Since the pulse chain sacrifice days, you know, I, I watched... I would say probably 80 to 90 percent of this stuff. No um, way. Are you are you like you're that means you're OG OG. You're like my first one of my first subscribers. Yeah, absolutely. I was up there for, for a while. I thought you know you kind of disappeared. And I was like, man, did he just like that was it? No, and, I didn't uh, run. <laughs> you know, it, it's you know, I saw you come back on the scene. I was like, yes, he didn't leave. So, no, I didn't leave. Uh, what happened is I got in a lawsuit and they told me I couldn't legally make content and I had to stop and then it ended and I came back with the fire. So yeah, it was hard no, too not, not being able to connect with the community after like, like the way I ran my channel, I created fam out of this YouTube game. Like mm. in these comments, I responded to everyone. I was never copy pasted. I got to know each person by their YouTube name. And if you saw them in person, I'd be like, wait, who are you? And if they'd have to tell me their YouTube name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that, that's that's how this is. You know, I've got my YouTube channel is, is fairly small compared to my Twitter. Uh, but I know my OGs who were with me uh, during SHIB when I really kind of started being more out there as far as Twitter goes. You know, I it's I've never had all these these followers from the from the beginning. They all kind of came within the last, I would say, two to three years. But my SHIB community, who I'm very tight with, uh, that's been with me since then, uh, mainly because, you know, they took the leap of faith with me. And, and obviously it, it paid off big time. So they they are by me no matter what. It's kind of like Richard Hart crew. Like you got your Richard Hart Nazis. They're not going <laughs> anywhere. They made them, you know, made, he made them a lot of money. So they're not going anywhere. And that's kind of how like, you know, my original ship crew is. So when I see them comment, like instantly, I mean, one of them was like, hey man, I need some pulse. Instantly, what's your wallet? Boom. I knew him mm. from way back. And didn't ask no questions, no issues. Like, what do you need? I just need some pulse to trade. How much you need? This, here's double that. There you go. You know, so so definitely that's how I am with my my OG crew, because uh, I do know that a good amount of people that follow me, some hate me, <laughs> some love me, some are in between. And you don't know what you're going to get every day I wake up. You don't know if you're going to get hate one day. You don't know if you gonna get praise one day. You know, you never know is, what you're going to get with my style of uh, marketing. Is that because you're. <laughs> Is that because the niche you chose or is it your style or like what is it your personality? What what do you think it is that brings that love slash hate vibe so strongly? Because I see it out there. I mm -hmm. I see it. What? You got people who love you, have your back. Then you have people who absolutely hate you. Like what what do you think it is? What I what I it's, it's my persona. And what a lot of people don't know is I used to be in professional wrestling and what like like this, state championship wrestling or like wwf wwe like, wrestling uh, <laughs> i've got a lot of i've got some videos out there of me performing on you know friday night smackdown it was at the time it was friday night smackdown so a lot of things like that i've traveled around with them so i've been taught the way to make people love you and i've been taught to make people hate you but regardless, no matter what way you go with, you bring people in those seats. 
So what you see, the B-Root style, the B-Root persona, is a professional wrestling acting type of persona that you see on Twitter. I actually don't go around walking around with the Gucci hat and, you know, Gucci glasses and a, and a belt, with, you know, money, <laughs> the money belt. Like, I don't. So um, it's, a persona, it's a persona of two people mixed together. The Rock and Ted DiBiase, Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase. Wow, I remember so those is, dudes. That is, so that is my my persona that you see on Twitter. I want with a little like, fla- with a little flair of you know new age you know stuff. Yeah, I I want to highlight I want to highlight something that you just said. I'm a coach for a long time, and I'm able to kind of see through the veil of most people. Like, I don't want to say everyone because I'm still human, but like, I really have a good intuition for this type of stuff. And to talk to someone like you at the level you're at, for you to just say, hey, that's a character that's that's acting on the streets. You're not going to see me like this. Like that right there is so it's basically the foundation of why I wanted to do this interview with you. It's like there's this there's this be roots moon king out online and on his show. But then there's this other guy inside of there. And I've gotten to know that guy a little bit, like just, just scratching the surface. And I'm like, Oh my God, this dude actually is a family man. He seriously cares. He's trying to build something. He, he came from nothing and built himself into what he is. And along the way you gave away the secret sauce. You gave away the secret sauce. (laughs) You did bro. And I'm, I want to ask you to release it today for all my people but i i want to just break, make this very very clear my boy moon king right here gave away the secret sauce to his whole business everything he did to build success in this crypto game he literally gave it away and that is one of the moments where i was like wait hold on like there's no there's no way anyone would ever do that if they're just full time scammer if they're just a scammer and I realized this narrative about you, this narrative has been skewed. And as a coach, I want to tell y'all, I want to tell y'all 100%. You hit me in these comments and tell me I'm wrong right now, all right? I'm open. If I'm wrong, tell me. But I think I'm right, okay? You cannot be in the Moon King space. You can't be in B Root's position, headwinding meme coins, thousands of meme coins over 10 years you cannot be in that position and not eventually have people come in use the pump as a rug would would you would you agree roots like there's no way to be who you are nah, and have all the projects long. come with integrity <laughs> you're not gonna last long you're gonna get, get, <laughs> get and and there are people that believe that and and you know i what i get a lot of is Hey, can you unblock me? I was wrong. And sometimes I don't want to. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, you know, what is the real reason? <laughs> well, I want to shill on your platform. And then I was like, no, that's not the apology I'm looking for. That's not that's not what it is. So I've had some some high up hexagons that has invited me to their parties, um, things like that, and I've showed up. And many of them would be like, what is this guy doing here? And they just assume what they think. And it's wrong. Um, so a lot of people think it's, it's, it's scamming. And it's not. It's trading. And I have given away everything of the secrets to the point where the game changed slightly. Because I gave away the secret. So... You know, a lot of people that hate on me never ever watch that video. They uh, never watch the video. And I would say in debates all the time, and I would go under fire, bro, under <laughs> fire of hate. <laughs> and I would ask them one question <laughs> Have you ever seen my video, The Laws of Meme Coins? That's I don't need to see a lot. Of, I don't need to see The Laws of Meme Coins. You're a scam. All right. Like this is never going to get anywhere. You like, know that roots. It <laughs> reminds me. It reminds me of like Richard Hart 
when he was yeah. in his outrage marketing phase and he was like holding the Chanel purses being like, what's up girls? You like $40,000 purses? And he had like the 80 bags walking out the store. That kind of made me laugh that photo, but like, that's what it reminds me of. And I'm onboarding at this time, right? I'm master of onboarding constantly. I just love this chain. I am a champion for this L1 and I'm not going to stop. And I love it, right? Mm -hmm. I think this is one of the best opportunities to get in now in a very unstable crypto game. This is the ticket. So I fully believe in this chain. And during that time, I remember onboarding people and they literally would write me like, yo, what, what do you, who, who the hell are y'all following? Like, what is this dude doing? If you think back to what he's doing, it's called outrage marketing. He was trying to get people to spark up emotion and feel some type of way. But if that's the only video you saw and you didn't see Top Hat Richard and you didn't see pre-sacrifice Richard and sacrifice for PLS Richard, do you guys remember like during the sacrifice, he was on stream answering question after question after question, just in, enlightening people with crypto knowledge. That is the dude where I'm like, whoa, guy knows his stuff. And when he starts outrage marketing, it's completely black and white. It's the other side of the, the spectrum. Do you, I feel like you got, you got hit with that. People were willing to see one side, but they weren't willing to see the other side. Would you agree? Absolutely. I think the... I want to go even further back as far as an analogy than that. The the true analogy, I don't know if you were here in 2018, 2019, but the you know, 2019 more like it, um, was the analogy of Richard Hart with Tone Vase and the lawyer show, where they were calling him a scammer and he was trying to tell people about Hex. So the beginning days of Hex where they're like, you're a scammer, that's all you're wanting to do. And this whole maxi mentality of hexagon came from that. It Explain literally it. came break, from that. Break it down, bro. So, People don't so, know. You have 10 years of crypto experience. <laughs> You've been here 10 years. Yeah. The depth of knowledge you have is so deep. We're going to tap into it right here in this wow. interview. Break it down for people. What was the birth of Richard Hart Maxi? The birth of Richard Hart Maxey was that episode right there. It was a Tone Vase episode where he went on with lawyers. And they basically called him a security. They called him a liar. They called him a scammer. Said it's going to rug. It's, it's, you're just out to get people's money because you don't have any money. Basically calling him what, you know, some maximalist would call me. You're a scammer. You're this. This is. They basically put a storyline and just went with it and said, this is who you are. I don't care. You can present me whatever product you want to present. You are a scammer because it's not Bitcoin. That's basically where the Hex Maximalist mindset came from because it was like, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I tried to bring you guys along, but you chose not to. And this is what you do. So you're constantly calling me a scammer behind my back. Don't call me a scammer to your following because you believe in one side and not the other that's where it all came from so when someone like myself comes along that trades it's like i'm putting you with all the other traders i'm putting you with all the other influencers you're a scammer this is what you do and i'm like well no not really i'm just out here trading and shilling just like anybody else it's like i like y'all you get paid in the beginning, I wasn't getting paid. But now there's some things I do get paid, absolutely. And I let you know that whether something's sponsored or not. Can, you, you, can you talk about that? Break it down real quick. Because yeah. these haters, like, I, I, I seriously, like, I really appreciate having you here to, to just be so open. You, you literally are not running from any questions. You're not no, hiding. No. You're not putting up BS. You're like, yo, I get paid sometimes. Can you explain how that works? Like Absolutely. behind the scenes, um, like what actually happens? For, Why do people hate the, on you so hard for getting paid? Because there are people who get paid and they get paid in tokens and they will dump on you. Ooh. So that is where the, the mentality of it's not fair because an influencer will get paid in tokens. The price gets pumped up. 
and then they will dump the tokens right on the right community. on their faces, right on just, their face, just smash Absolutely. on them. Smash yeah, them. like just do it. So for the longest time, I didn't take any tokens. I didn't like taking tokens because I built my community from trust. So my community that came in was strictly trust. This guy has been speaking the truth since day one, and he is actually trustworthy. I trust him. So that is like a friend to me. So when somebody comes in, an outsider, and says, I want you to promote my product because you are basically a walking billboard, which is what I am. My Twitter is basically a walking billboard. If I tweet something, there's 53,000 people looking at it saying, I either want to get in or I don't want to get in or pass. That mm -hmm. right there is a is a not just a skill, but that is a, a money-making machine. It absolutely is. I haven't had to put any money, my own money, into crypto. Man, going 2019 was the last time I actually put my own personal money in crypto because I get paid in crypto. It's that simple. <laughs> I get paid in crypto. So I don't need to put money in crypto. But what a lot of people will see is shill tank. So mm. they'll see shill tank. They see prices go up. They see prices go down. And they instantly assume I am the one doing the selling as the mm -hmm. price goes up on shill tank. I can tell you from this day, I have never bought or so and sold a coin on shill tank. Never once. Wow. Most of the time, 90 wow. 90 percent of the time until like the last like three or four months, and I'm gonna tell you why the switch happened. I only take ETH payments. So that's a bold statement. You you just basically said you are not the one dumping on anyone's head from your show. And I have to tell y'all, that's the biggest criticism I've ever heard of you. Yep. That's the biggest criticism is that you're dumping on people's faces and you don't actually care yep. about them. And when yep. I got to talk to you privately, I was kind of like, Oh wow, there's way more to this dude than I realized. The, like the, the 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 hate that's circulating is not it's not educated hate, it's ignorant hate. And I, I got to know that personally, but you just said it, and I actually I actually like I'm inclined to really believe you. T tell us how you didn't tell us how you don't dump on them. Like, how is that possible well, that you're in the gains and you're not dumping on people? If I take ETH. So there's two, there's, I'm, I'm going to give you some scenarios of real life scenarios of how it works. Um, sometimes I buy the coin early and not even know that they want to put it on, be on shield take. I just buy the coin because I'm a degen like a lot of other people. Just buy <laughs> so I'm searching just like everybody else. I give them a coin, it gets hyped up. Cool. I'll ride the hype. I'll take profits sometimes, just like I do in the laws of meme coins. I literally teach people how to take profits. It's hilarious. Like this, this is how this is how I do things. But as soon as someone calls me up and hits me up about shill tank and I am in the coin, right then and there, the selling, any type of sell that I do stops and comes to a halt. Now I'll give an I'll give an example like a coin comes out maybe I'll take some profit they want to come on shield tank now people know that I'm in the coin but if it goes up it's basically a buy the rumor sell the news a lot of other people realize that also and they do that it's hyped up people start buying in and people start selling and I'm just sitting in the back like this you know and and that's a scenario wow and I will let that coin dump and go to hell before I sell it on show Why? Why is that? Because, because I get paid in ETH. There's more money in doing that than the actual coin. So you're ruining you're like a you're like a stupid drug dealer if you do that. So, <laughs> so am I gonna take Break the drug down. am I gonna take the am I gonna be the, the kingpin guy, the cartel guy, the high up that says, all right. I'm not going to lace this with this because it's going to kill my customer and I'm no longer going to have that customer. Or you're going to be like, listen, they're going to get high, they're going to do their thing and they're going to keep coming back to me and keep doing, keep doing that. 
I'm not going to kill my customer by dumping on them over. Like, that's stupid. So I want them to get that 100x. I want them to get that 1,000x. Why? Because that brings more people into shill tech, which brings – I could yes. start charging more. I could start charging more the more people to come in. Why would I screw out a, a, a small 1,000-person audience when I want to have 10,000 people in that audience? It's true. And You're, and look, it's charging, smart, it's smart this? business. You ready for this? I charge 6 ETH. Instead of me charging <laughs> 6 ETH, when there's 20,000 people in there, I can charge 20 ETH. I hear and that's wow. what I'm growing myself into. Look, so any, ha- any haters out there, they need to see this. They need to see this, this behind the scenes you. And I just want to thank you for like revealing all. And I, I made up that title. You didn't tell me that. I just, I knew from talking to you, if we get talking, the kind of questions I ask and who I am as a coach, I'm going to penetrate deeply into the bottom line. I can't help it. It's just how I think. And I just made that title Moon King Reveals All because it's it's two or three fold. Like first you have experience in crypto for 10 years and you cannot fake that depth of knowledge. Second, you've researched thousands of coins. You have seen so much game mechanics, probably more than most people on the planet. Lastly, you actually have a heart inside and you have a mission in this game and you want to increase people's wealth. You want them to get the 10, 100x because you just you just basically laid it out. If someone comes to this platform called Shill Tank and they get 100x, they're going to come back and yeah. they're going to absolutely be frothing for more. That is smart business. You want your people to win. It doesn't make sense to to yeah, take them out. Zero, it makes zero sense because bad news spreads faster than good news. It's that wow. simple. It's that simple. So I'll give the second scenario is I buy ETH or I get paid in the ETH and I don't even buy the coin. My platform is shill tank. You shill to the community. Doesn't necessarily mean I like your coin. <laughs> like like this billboard I see out there, I'm sure. What does it say? Stags plumbing. I'm willing to bet. That this guy out here, whatever this plumbing service is out there, I'm willing to bet the person that owns that billboard doesn't use them. Wow. I get it. There's one right here. Burger King. I'm willing to bet the person that put the Burger King uh, billboard up, I bet you they don't eat Burger King all the time. So Roots, are you, you Roots? You're basically like the convention center, and all the people coming in with their coins. That's you're not representing that. You're just the convention center that houses all yeah. of them. I'm. I, I I call myself a walking billboard. That's wow. simple. If I like you, I will give you like a discount. I'll hook you up. I'll hook it up. If I don't know much about you, if we haven't created a relationship before this even went down, it's probably going to be a base amount. Guess what? If you're on, if you're on, um, if you're on Pulse Chain, you ready for this? It's half off. Tell me more, because they no, don't, they don't pay, they no, don't pay what ETH Bros need, play. My Pulse Chain gang doesn't chain. pay. My Pulse Chain <laughs> gang doesn't pay what, what ETH Bros play. Tell me, tell me about Pulse Chain. This is like, bro, my whole <laughs> channel, my entire channel is Pulse Chain. I'm the first Pulse Chain channel, yeah. and I have just covered Pulse Chain 100%. The, I've had a couple of protocols on that are agnostic that fit directly into Pulse Chain. And guess what, y'all? My last video was a tell-all of my honest, true, in-my-heart thoughts of why we didn't 100x. And I truly believe... You bring $150 million into a new L1, and 80% of the people want that native L1 gas token, and that thing does a 2x, something is happening. Something's happening. It should have done a 50, 100, probably more than 100. Roots, tell me from your experience. You bring $150 million in two weeks into a coin, like on an L1, and, and most people want that native gas token. In your opinion, like how high... How many X's would that do? Um, 
That's a lot of money. My 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 true point. my true opinion on Pulse Chain coming coming in was I I thought that we could see anywhere from a fifty to a hundred x. Yes. If now there's a big if on that. <laughs> <laughs> if <laughs> we launched back in 2021, bro. I listen. I have to. <laughs> I have to tell y'all. Like, I'm the first Pulse Chain channel, and I was championing this chain, working 14-hour days yeah. for free, making a video every day. I couldn't help it. I was barely sleeping. My brain yeah. was so excited about this chain, and all of us thought it was going to launch. And yeah. I want to tell y'all, I know for a fact that the, by the comments I was getting and the direct messages that I was getting, this chain was maximized excitement absolute maximum i cannot tell y'all how many dms i got i lost count of how many hundreds of dms let i missed pulse chain sacrifice oh my god i missed it what am i gonna do it was like fomo beyond recognition yeah. and i look i love this ecosystem i'm not here to to talk crap on anyone but I do want to ask you the real tough questions. Mm -hmm. What happened to this community and the momentum and the economic energy that could be funneled into Pulse Coin and Pulse Chain? What happened to that in the process of taking longer and longer and longer to launch? The bear market happened. Many, the hex narrative fell apart. Can, can you the explain? Price, the, 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 first off, the narrative during the bull market, the narrative of Hex was always it's anti the market because it's paired to USDC. So because... Explain Hex that for people who don't understand. Okay, so this whole thing with the Hart's Law and all that, and all that, all that shazm, that, that marketing, um, basically was because they're all paired together, they all go up together. They will go down together. And everything just kind of flows that way. Ethereum, all the ERC-20 tokens, when Ethereum goes down, they're all going down. When Ethereum goes up, they're all going up. Because Bitcoin is attached to Ethereum and their pairings, same thing happens. It's just that Ethereum goes up higher. When it drops, it will go down lower. It will go down um, harder. Hex narrative for the longest time was it does not follow the market because it's paired to USDC and not Ethereum or Bitcoin. That was the marketing behind that. Now, as Hex went up against the market, now I'm about to spit some truth. It might not be what everyone wants to hear, but it is the truth. I spit the facts. When Pulse Chain came out and it was announced, Hex was sitting at a penny. It started flying up when people realized that you want to get in Hex to get more value for your Pulse Chain and then you sacrifice your Pulse Chain at a certain amount. That was going against the market. So when Bitcoin bottomed, it got announced and therefore it was going up. See, we told you Hex doesn't matter. Hex doesn't follow the market. But in reality, we all know it was Pulse Chain. So it was going up because of Pulse Chain, Hex. Then what now, happened would, was... Would you say that like that narrative that get your copy on Pulse Chain, that is what is that what you're saying is what was driving... Yes, that was driving up? that was driving that price up. It had nothing to do with... It was because it was paired with USDC. But that was being marketed also. It was also being marketed by certain, you know, Hex influencers that were on a line diagonal to $28. Like that was being heavily marketed. So people were coming in, FOMOing, getting ready for Pulse Chain. It was crazy. It was. I'm a pretty crazy sure there was a point. Every every channel I saw said one dollar hex, like yeah, across the was, board. I, I remember that. It was yeah. crazy. So then what happened was it peaked at 17 cents, and then started going down to nine cents as the as the Pulse Chain sacrifice happened. And please don't ask me how I just remember all this stuff. I just remember some just most random stuff. Like you asked me how many X's were Ethereum in 2018. I'll, I'll tell you the name, the time, and the date. Like that's what I do. But it went down after the the Pulse Chain 
of sacrifice once it's down. And then we all thought it was happening after the sacrifice. So as the market was going all up at the same time, because remember the market didn't peak until November of 2021. So as the market was going up, so was the hype around Pulse Chain. So therefore everyone's now buying in more hex because they missed the Pulse Chain sacrifice. So now they're buying more hex to get that copy so they can switch it over to, to Pulse Chain before anybody else can. Same narrative. And it went up to 52 cents. And then we realized, wait a second, it's getting delayed? Oh, wow. So then it started going all the way down. The narrative of Hex follow, doesn't follow the market. It's not following the market because now it's just going down with the market and people are selling off, people are selling off, people are selling off, people are selling off. Wait a second, Pulse X is coming. Ooh, going against the market while the market's going down. That narrative comebacks. Hex doesn't get it's all emotional. Emotional trading, emotional marketing. It's the same thing as any other coin in crypto. So mm -hmm. it goes up to 34 cents, 35 cents. It ain't coming out. Down to 25 cents. That $28 uh, narrative is no longer in play. Down to 20 cents. You ready for this? Godwell's going to save us. Godwell's been buying in. Godwell's going to be going buying in. It's not going to go lower than 20 cents. You know why? Because Godwell's protecting us. I remember all this. <laughs> Below 20 cents. It fell quick. Because now Godwell's no longer protecting us. Wait a second. Now Richard Hart's just streaming, pissing us all off while the price is going down. I bet you he's cashing all his hex out and selling all his hex. Ooh, 10 cents hits. Oh, I don't think it's going low below 10 cents. This is the hot, this is the hardest hex I've ever dropped. Five cents. Uh, we're good here. Two cents. Dang, like okay, we start going back up. Um, pulse chain is gonna get released in mid-May. Yeah, here we go. Buy oh, we buy it here. We're starting to buy it back again. Everything's good. Oh, my fault. It's not getting released. <sighs> Goes down. So wow. Hex is just being carried by Pulse Chain. It ain't even out yet. Somehow the Heart's Law is working on Pulse Chain. It's not even out yet. So during this whole time <laughs> of this of this 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 craziness, basically Twitter, which is everyone knows what crypto Twitter is. That's where everyone hangs out. That's where all the tweeting on tech goes. Comes out with spaces called. During the bear market, so during this whole process of time, you don't see people typing their anger. You actually hear the anger in somebody's voice. You hear the toxicity in someone's voice. Wow. They don't curse while they're typing, but when they're on spaces calls, you hear them F-bombing you, you're this, you're, and it's all because the price is in their net worth is going down they're mm. emotional you don't see it in characters you are hearing it and it's mm. spreadable so that's where that maxi mentality is starting to come out man i've been cursed out so many times by hexagons during that that downfall what Mighty what do you think is the what is the genesis of that anger towards you is it like is it Everything you laid out, how the reactiveness and responsiveness of that chart and how people who really believe in those projects, like I really believe in these projects. Mm -hmm. I was on a roller coaster up and down, but I have a lot of coaching experience. So I don't typically lash out at people over something that I've chosen to be a part of because that's my choice. Yeah, I choose to participate. If we go up, we go down. Those are all my choices to be yep. here. I tend to not attack others for it. Even Richard Hart, like he could, he could onboard me and make me believe in him and then become outrage marketer and do a 180 to how he used to be. And I can be like, okay, that's okay. He's doing mm -hmm. his thing. I still believe in the fundamentals. I don't tend to lash out. Why do you think people were lashing out at that time on Two you? Two reasons, man. Two reasons. Um, the emotions of the market. Actually, three reasons. The emotion of the market of losing. I don't care who you are. 
when you lose value in what you thought that was going to go up or stay mm. up forever, emotionally, you're going to be affected by it. That simple. I can tell you dips are going to be in the game and you can prepare for as much as you want. If you're looking at the ch- ch- charts 24-7 and you don't understand TA and you're emotional by heart, your emotions are going to come out. So that's number one. Number two, the protection of hex. There were people rocking sacrifices while the price of hex was going down. There were a lot of sacrifices in hex at that time while the price was going down. So they're looking to blame somebody for some reason. So there's a lot of finger pointers. You who, who can I blame? You know that these people are just like always trying to blame somebody. And that's not a way to be. You, it's me. Be about you. Fix yourself. Improve yourself. Make yourself better and stop worrying about the other person. And number three, the outsiders that came in, such as myself, weren't accepted. You know why? Because it's not the hex way. All mm. we want to do is buy a hex, stake it, and leave us alone. Anyone that comes out from there, is trying to poison you. They're trying. You're not drinking the cool. He's not drinking the Kool-Aid. He's bad for us. You know why he's bad for us? Because you go and trade. And you trade your money away. And trading's not for everybody. Absolutely. But there are plenty of hexagons that trade. Price doesn't go up or down if somebody doesn't trade. It's that simple. Price can go up with a bunch of people willing to trade their ETH for their HEX or their USDC for their HEX. Guess what? Price doesn't go down if people aren't willing to sell their HEX for their USDC. So when they see someone like myself come in, you're pointing the finger at me. He's scamming you. He's the reason I see everybody selling their hex for for cult. I see everybody selling their hex for MRI. Who's shilling all these coins? Mm. B roots. So this is that's part of the angle. Oh, I they the they that's so part of the whole reason. They felt like you were like drilling a, a hole in the bottom of their bucket and draining the out re- the resources and volume and taking that economic energy and ripping it out to another community is essentially it. Correct. And reality in reality is we are in crypto to be your own bank. You can't be in crypto. Here's the thing and you're probably going to disagree with this style of of my thought and that's okay cuz it's, it's cool to have a different opinion. Um the holding of hands Style in crypto won't work because at some time or another, you're going to do your thing. Let's let's talk Ready? about this. I, I want you to get deep because I l- let me just break this down for everyone. I'm mm-hmm. from Legacy. In Legacy, I walked in a room. Okay, I had this fire roasted, absolutely top ten, smoking hot, gorgeous. The kind of that kind of woman where you're like. Ooh, like my spinal cord tingles when she walks in the room. That's my roasted, all right? And I meet her family. I want to impress them so badly. I want to be the man. However, I walk in to these multi, multi millionaire brokers in the stock market. And these dudes have accounts with top companies that they're NDA'd with. They can't even tell you who they work with. They can't, they, they know. They know behind the scenes uh, uh, accounting that literally like their family cannot invest in those companies because they know the information they have is so behind the scenes that they'll absolutely, it's not fair. They can't trace. So (laughs) exactly. So like the family can't even find out what these people know per company. And that's the room I walked into. And I asked them straight up, I want to be here for this fire roasted. I didn't tell him that, you know, I'm like, I want to be here. You know, I spoke a little differently, but the (laughs) point is, is that I wanted to provide and they gave me wisdom. And that wisdom was minimum five year hold on any stock that you get into. 
you choose wisely and you hold it a minimum of five years. And if you're not willing to do that, we're not teaching you anything. That's the first thing they told me. Now, break it down. When lit goes from legacy, from these multimillionaire brokers who have more money than they could spend in two lifetimes to now being in crypto, do I need to evolve my worldview? Depending, see, that's tough for me to say that. Depending on what you want in life and in crypto. My mindset is different from a hexagon's mindset. I personally don't feel, and you guys don't, I mean, you probably should tell my, probably should tell my stories and behind my thinking, and we can do that later and why I think, and we can bring it all back and then we can, you know, you see why, why I think this way. But I personally am not in agreement of crypto being around in 15 years. So when I hear the mindset of 5555, five, 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 it kind of makes me cringe a little bit because I'm like, eh, is, is this from a regulator perspective that you have uneasiness or what? what is the logic behind that? Gains are going to diminish. It's already diminishing. That simple. Gains are already diminishing, whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's it's um, Ethereum. Um, it's just diminishing. So, so there's only like, 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 like Richard Hart says, you know, the, the richest man already knows about it. It's already in, you know, so these guys are, there's a certain percentage of the world that's in, but you know, the richest guys already got in. So you either like crypto or you don't like crypto. Um, I do think that banks will get in, but they will control it the way they control gold right yeah. now gold is controlled in its free time gold you could probably make it rain with gold but as soon as they got a hold of it it just sat like that and i do believe they're going to do that with crypto when they when they get the chance to do it and they're i believe they're doing that right now is so, that what is that what you think the gensler attacking cex's is because I, I think start. it's just the start of it i do my, think that's that's the, that's the beginning of it. Let me give you end. my theory. It's not, it's not here. I want yeah. I want you to tell me tell me real quick. I've seen anyone who doesn't know this go Google Harvard classes, Harvard crypto classes, Gary Gensler. He used to teach at Harvard and he did whole courses on crypto and guess what? It is a 180 degrees different dude. He's bullish on crypto. He's mm -hmm. bullish. You can yeah. hear him talking. He explains stuff. And for anyone who doesn't know for anyone who doesn't know about Gensler, he is a Goldman Sachs boy. Yep, he's, a gold. he's a Goldman <laughs> Sachs boy for 18 years, y'all. He was there a long time. So you got to understand, when I come from legacy, I look at the Goldman Sachs. I look at the JP Morgans. I look for BlackRock and Vanguard investors. This is the big dogs. These are the big dogs, okay? You follow the smart money, and if you get in before them and they come That's in good. behind you, you will have never work again money in the stock market. Yeah. That's how people get rich. So when I it's see happening the now within crypto, it's happening around with crypto. Like to me, like my minimum see a piece out, I'm out of here is nine figures. So so as soon as I as soon as I'm worth nine figures, you see me bounce, you like beavers hit it. <laughs> like you know, <laughs> you already know where my goal is at. Like I'd be straight up. Like you're not you're probably not gonna hear me. You're not going to hear from me in nine. Nine's a billion. You want to? You want to be a billionaire? No, nine. Nine's hundred million. Hundred million. Okay, my bad. Hundred million. So I could be a billionaire. Yeah. So so if I can if I could be a billionaire, I could be a billionaire. But like, I my goal, my goal first was to retire before the age of forty. That was before crypto. That was just my goal in general. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I was going to do it. So it wasn't the best smart goal, if you know, what, you know what a smart goal is. Like it wasn't a good smart goal, but I was going to find a way to be a millionaire and and, rad, uh, and retire by the time I'm forty. Well, that happened early, which shit. So then I changed my goal. I was like, all right, well, I got this so early, like I'm not ready for this. Like I'm ready to be in. So now I want to be worth nine figures, you know, the Birdman style, one hundred. That's what that means when they say when you hear hundred all the time, worth a hundred mil. So I was like, cool, let me get that goal too. I'm right with you, 100. Let me make 100 mil. 
And that's been my goal since what after after ship. So so I do believe that crypto is slowing down. I do think it's slowing down. Um I don't think we got many cycles to where those big gains happen because just say I'm worth a hundred mil. Mm-hmm. Bitcoin comes out. All I need is a 2x to put half of that in and make me another 50 mil. Mm-hmm. Right now, you can put two or three billion dollars in Bitcoin and only move the price up maybe two, three thousand dollars if that. Explain so if that take... to people who don't understand the volume and the depth that. Yeah, Bitcoin like you, you can't put three billion in Pulse Chain and not freaking skyrocket the price like crazy. <laughs> you can't put three billion in Hex and, and freaking it'll be instantly be like 500 bucks. $500 per hex and people are just going to be selling on your head the whole time. You know, kind of like how you say I do, but you know, <laughs> it's just how it works. So, you can do that with Bitcoin. It has enough liquidity in it to put billions of dollars in it. But here's the thing. I don't need a 20x as a big boy. If I could put $5 billion into into Bitcoin and 3 exit and make 15 billion out of that five billion in a matter of a year and a half, two years, I don't even need my business anymore. Mm. So for every single person hoping that it gets to a million dollars, to me, that's a that's kind of a uh a far out there dream. I don't know if Bitcoin needs to get to a million dollars to make these rich people like super rich, wealthy billionaires happy. I could take it to a hundred thousand dollars, drop it 80%, buy back in that $30,000, put that money back in billions back in. You still believe we're going to $500,000. I'll put it up and make it maybe $110,000. Wreck you, sell it all. And back in that 40,000, all right, how about 120,000 this thing? Maybe 150,000. And they just make billions and billions and billions. While you're sitting here waiting for turn my 1000x into, you know, my $1000 into $100,000. It's not happening with Bitcoin. Mm. It ain't happening with Ethereum no more. Ethereum's topping at a 1.2 trillion dollar market cap in my opinion. I predicted in 2019 that Bitcoin was going to stop at a $1.2 trillion market cap. I Where just saw that clip. At? Where did it stop at? Like $1.23 trillion market cap. Guess what? Newsflash. Ethereum is going to do the exact same thing. Cycles does the same thing. Where is that at? Anywhere from $10,000 to $13,000. They're loading up now at a $2,000 Ethereum to get a 6X. You That's called it here first, get. bro. That's, That's a bold all you're going to get. That's it's a whole claim. You're, you're literally get. called it on this channel right here. You're not going to get above a one point. It might go from anywhere from 1.2 trillion and think people out to a 1.6 trillion market cap. It will not go any higher than that. I how do you? Not how are you so going. confident? Because crypto works inside of market caps. Why do you think every shit coin, meme coin stops at a $1 million market cap? Psychological. What's the next number? Three. Psychological. What's the next number? Five. What's the next number? Ten. What's the next number? Twenty. What's the next number? Thirty. What's the next number? Fifty. A hundred. And you start all over again. One hundred. Two fifty. Five hundred. A billion. A billion. Three billion. Five billion. Ten billion. It's the same thing over and over again. I have studied all these charts. Look at every single one of them and look where they top out. Why? Wow. Because it's psych- it's the psychic part. It's your, the mentality of people. Oh, I'm going to sell it at a ten billion dollar market cap. Why? You probably bought it at one, and you want a ten x. Where it's one times ten, ten million. You're going to sell ten million. So does everybody else is going to do the same damn thing. And if you're lucky, you might get that one well, or unlucky, you might get that one well that says, "Ooh, forget a ten million dollar market cap. I'm going to sell it off at eight point five, and you don't get there." There's not enough bullish nature to get it to 10 billion. I'm just going to dump the truck like that. So why do you think Hex stopped that exactly at 10,000 X? I, I've wondered that. I've, I've honestly wondered, is the psychological implications of that number, like 
Is that what people were holding out for? And once it was hit, it was like, boom, close the door. We're you done. Ready for this? I'm about to hit you guys some truth. Post chain ain't going 10,000 X. Break it down. Tell me your. Post chain ain't going to. If you think I'm going to sit here and wait for 10,000 X and I can sell at 9,500 X, I'm going to let you know there's going to be a lot of people that's going to do that. What's the difference between a 9,500 X and a 10,000 X to your portfolio right now that you're looking at it right now? You take your money and 10,000 exit from the portfolio, from your from your price of what you got right now. Now 9,500 exit. it. Are you upset? Or are no, you I don't think mentally so. saying, I want a 10,000 X? And you're telling yourself that over and over and over and over again. And boy, it would suck if it stopped at a 9,500 X and you thought it was going to stop at 8,000 X. 7,000x, 6,000x. Wait a second. It's going back up. It's going back up. It's going back up. Yeah, we're going to hit that 10,000x, 8,000x, 7,000x, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 9, 8, 500, 50. And in that mental, in that time, you ready for this? I'm going to roll it all back around. That whole time, you could have been a millionaire. You have tens of millionaires, tens of millions, twenties of millions. You don't think you're going to be cursing out a bunch of people when you went from a 9,500X and you didn't cash anything out and it went back down to a 50X? Whoo, you're on suicide watch. You're pissed off at the world. And that's what happened with Hex. And that's what happened with every other crypto there is since known to man. Now, it does have a tendency to go back up and create higher highs. But the problem is you have to wait another four years for that. That kills people inside. Especially when they see millions and now they've got tens of thousands from millions. That's not easy for anyone to look at. No, that's, nobody. That's I've seen it. It's happened to me. Is so, that how you learned? Is like you've got burned hard. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You're gonna learn, and you see me say in my tweets. You're gonna learn and earn your stripes, one way or the other. If you stay here longer enough, you earn your stripes, and you'll realize that this whole thing is nothing but a cycle in a game. But if you don't earn your stripes, you're gonna get wrecked. And you're gonna you're you're just gonna psych your own self out out of this market. And I see people come and go. And I've said someone tweeted at me and said, I see your kind, you come and go. I'm like, bro, I've been here since 2013 preaching the same stuff. You can't sit here and tell me I'm coming and going. I haven't seen it all. Well, sometimes I think I see it all, but I don't see it all. But like I've seen more than him, like more than most. So I'm mentally prepared. There's a reason why I was able to predict pulse chain. There's going to be a rise up, there's going to be a drop, and there's going to be a fun. Why? Because every single launch does the exact same thing. Richard Hart even says, I'll give you 50 weeks to wash out those who don't believe. He doesn't even need to say anything. He's not. He'll just let you psych yourself out. Because you can't control that you wanted gains now and you couldn't hold long enough and then you just wash your way out the market. It's basically what I just said. I just put it with pulse chain. So you're seeing people flush themselves out with pissed off remarks. Rackham had pissed off remarks during the, during, during the, the, the um, thing. But I, I like Rackham. I like Rackham. Um, He's got me blocked, but I, I, I do like Rackham. He can't, you can't get from nothing to something without being smart. He did something right. So he killed the game in that. But he spoke out He spoke out a little bit on it, and that's okay. Um, I see When, um, when I see was that? I, I, was, I think I was out of the community at yeah, that point. I missed all that. Yeah. It was the, it was the situation with um, the outrage marketing. He wasn't opposed to it. He wasn't, he wasn't happy about that. Uh, that, that makes sense because he's very business-like and he talks yes. to professionals. Like if he's going to onboard, he'll onboard a whole country it's tough. It's from the tough. top down. 
and he like he wants a unified business look i know i know from talking to him that like he's very professional in his dealings and he deals with fortune 500 companies and if these guys see that kind of stuff they're kind of like what are you bringing us so i totally i totally get it and there's there's both sides are needed i personally i love this community because i don't have to agree with everyone but Mm -hmm. we can still have we can still be bros and that's what makes this community awesome you don't want everyone just all cookie cutter the same you want the guy who's fudding you want the guy who's bullish you want the moon boy math you want the guy who says, oh, this is all a scam. And you want the people in the middle. You want a healthy mix of all of us because that's reality. We need to be in yeah. reality in this game. I don't hate on people that are fudding or stressing. I'm just like, cool, what's your, why, do, why are you fudding? What's your yeah. logic? What do you actually believe? And I've learned, I've researched FUD, and I've learned from these people stuff I didn't know. And that made mm-hmm. me a better crypto trader a better crypto holder a better influencer i've become a better person by learning the full spectrum of what the market has to offer so i really do honor all the opinions i just want to find the truth yeah you need you need your rackums um and you need your 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 smaller guy because your smaller guy is going to be probably the loudest you know um i'm not necessarily a smaller guy and i'm loud but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, you know, that, that's, just, that's just my personality. But, but you know, that smaller guy, I'm sure, you ready for this? You know, not financial advice. Please don't take this any financial advice. You're talking to a guy with a Gucci hat with meme coin, little coins on it, and uh, Gucci glasses. Probably shouldn't take any advice from me. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> It's not probably you shouldn't take any advice from me because I'm not giving advice me, bro. You're but, me. but anyways, um, majority of people that sacrifice for Pulse Chain sacrifice a thousand dollars. I have a feeling that if they hold, that they can become millionaires. This cycle, this cycle, I do think it's going to happen. Um, wow, that's a that's a think, bold bold claim, bro. Thousand dollars turns into one milli. I do think that if it doesn't break, have this break cycle, it down, break it down. It, I think Richard Hart has a goal. Ooh. I, think, I think Richard Hart's goal is to make a certain amount of millionaires. And when I look at the charts and see that the majority of people decided to sacrifice and the majority of them sacrificed a thousand dollars, I think if Richard Hart can market and get Pulse Chain to make them millionaires, now on paper, I think a lot of those people his following would just get even crazier and, and louder. Uh, can and, you and, imagine? Can you imagine, y'all, if everyone that I got lit on this chain two years ago and we actually launch and we have some growing pains, it shakes some haters out, but the people who believe stay with us and we moon run and you're able to turn $1,000 into a million. Can you imagine how much you would love the founder of this project who changed your life forever? That it's would marketing. be amazing. It's marketing. It's a pure marketing tactic. I see $670 million in die that hasn't even been touched or moved. Like whether you do that through LP, liquidity on the chain, ink token, more incentives, there is going to be something that is planned that we don't know. Now I'm not a I'm not an LP provider. I'm not that type of person. So if it happens, it happens. It doesn't doesn't for me. As far as I don't, I, I'm gonna let you right know. I, I don't need a thousand X to 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 get my my figures. So so I'm happy <laughs> by that. I'll, if I get a thousand X, I'm way above what I was expecting. So, You're, like, so people good. people don't know how bull. Like we need to we need to talk real quick. People don't know how bullish you are on this chain. You have your own money in 
and you've been in crypto oh, yeah. 10 years, so you rolled it, rolled it. Oh, are yeah. you a whale in this game, low key without without doxing too much? Like, are you are you at a whale status? Are you a mini whale? Where are you at in Pulse Chain? I have more than majority. Wow. Why? Why? Tell the me majority why. Majority is a thousand dollars, but <laughs> <laughs> so tell me that. why. No, but I, <laughs> I'm just like, no, tell no. Tell me I, why I really, you you went in hard and heavy. Tell um, me why you went in hard and heavy into Pulse Chain. I'll, I'll tell I'll tell my story. Like I said, I, I just I just speak when someone asks. I I I I, I speak. Um, I made my money. Let me let me go back to my story, then we can circle around to it. Yeah. Um, I came into Bitcoin in 2013. All I had was a thousand dollars, just like many you get many sacrifices in Pulse Chain. Seems like to be the number that you're willing to just throw, uh, whether you got money or not. And at that time, I. I really didn't have any money. I was just out of college, um, not too long, outside of the worst time to come out of college. I graduated in 2007. So I'm thinking, right, I'm, a guy, right into the I'm making all this money out of college. I'm good. And, I'm and then the market for, tanks. And I'm, I'm working at the mall for like $10. <laughs> <a month. You're> <laughs> like, <laughs> I've got a big thing. <laughs> The university graduate degree with, with <laughs> minors out the wazoo, law degree, uh, applying for the FBI, working at the <laughs> like it is what it is. So, <laughs> so outside outside of that, um, you know, I, I had a thousand bucks in my name. My friend who who you know, God bless this man's soul, he he, he had a successful during this whole downturn of the economy, this dude creates a, 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 a porn industry product that makes this guy millions of dollars mm-hmm. in the grass. So I was like, bro, what are you doing? Because all you was doing is letting me into the bars for free. I graduate, you don't, and you're sitting on millions of dollars. Like, what the hell am I doing wrong? Like, I done did everything wrong, and you're killing the game. You used to be a like a bouncer at a bar at, at a bar, and and on the college campus and you're just killing the game right now and he goes you know he tells me this this you know company that he that he created i was like genius dude i was like what are you doing with your money bitcoin wow. bitcoin's got like two three hundred dollars he's like you better wow. get in it he's like you better get in this game so i was like all right i'll scoop up some money and then this is you know with my thousand dollars i bought me like three bitcoin at the time uh, I've, I've I've showed this post where I bought, purchased my first Bitcoin on Coinbase. Uh, was Coinbase that from mall Bitcoin. money? You were working at a mall and you scraped oh, yeah. a thousand bucks. Man, that's a mall, cool story. Mall mall money. Um, um, I used to flip cell phones, so iPhone kind of was out during there. So iPhone for one and two. I used to have a business where I flipped out iPhones. I would just go out and just like be on Craigslist. Craigslist was hot. It wasn't Facebook Marketplace or Offer Up. It was Craigslist back then. And I just post on Craigslist. I got this phone. I got a hundred dollar phone. And I flipped that bad boy for two fifty. You know, I was a legal drug dealer back then, bro. I was just hustling. <laughs> <laughs> I was just hustling, hustling the legal way with Apple products. <laughs> but so, people need to learn. People, yes, listen. As a yeah. coach, learn from this man who is sitting in a position to be a mini whale in this game. Yeah. Learn because guess where he started? He started working at a mall with a degree out of college, thinking he's going to crush it. And reality smashed on him. Did he give up? Did he quit? No. He hustled. And he did it in a legal way. And he got himself boosted one by one until you're now sitting in this position where people are hating on you for getting paid. Let's let's call a spade a spade. That's what it is. is I get paid in crypto and they hate that I get paid a different way. Which is funny because crypto is meant to be money, which means you're supposed to get paid in it. And I don't know how, I don't know how all of a sudden the idea has changed that you're not allowed to spend what you get paid and you want it to be money, but you know, it is what it is. But anyway, um, you know, so I was working uh, for AT&T at the time. I moved to one city, um, smashing it. I was like the number one, like U-verse seller um, in the country, which is their cable services. Wow. And then, um, I transferred somewhere down south, smashed it there also uh, with AT&T. And then what had happened was uh, the show Tough Enough came out. And my it's a WWE Tough Enough, which is, you know, just win a contract to be to you made a million dollar contract with the WWE. And my friends were like, bro, you should try out for this. They're like, you 100% should try out for this. This is you all the way. 
And every now and then I'd watch wrestling. I'd go to like WrestleMania if it was in the area. It was fun. So I was like, you know, I used to be a big wrestling fan. Like, why not? So my wife and I, my wife and I decided to like do a video. So we spent like probably like three, four hours making this video. And maybe one day I'll release a video and I'll get <laughs> joked on, cracked on the hardest on crypto Twitter. I guarantee I will if I ever release this video. But maybe on my way out, I'll release that video. So that's what I do. But <laughs> I released this video. Within a week, I get a phone call from the WWE. It's like, we want to try you out. I'm like, man, my friends are playing a joke on me. Like, they're screwing with me. It's like the guys at work, I know they're screwing me. What happens is they start calling me every day to really get to know me, to see, like, are you really, like, this guy you say you are? Like, you're very confident. You're very, like, presentable, and you're businesslike, and we like you. So they start just for about two weeks. They were just constantly drilling me with questions, getting to know me. And they're like, we want, we want to um, – we want to, we want to hire you up. So I said, okay, that's cool. I was like, so, so they flew me out to LA, put me up in a very nice hotel, did MRIs. They watched me lift weights and everything, and just basically just watched over me. And um, long story short, because this is a big story in itself, just that in itself. Fast forward, uh, they flew twenty eight people out there. They were only taking thirteen for the show. I was number fifteen. Head of uh, WWE talent relations just came to my room. Let me know the news. They said, they said, we like you. Um, but if you're good enough, we will find you. And if you're serious about this, we'll call you back up. Hmm. So they wanted to see if I was serious about being a professional wrestling or it was just a whole joke. So I went to my wife, went back down south. I won't tell where I was at the time, but I went back down south, told my wife. I said, I can do this. I was like, I'm going to get into the WWE. She sat in me and said, are you sure about this? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm getting into the WWE. You can't tell me nothing. So I quit. It was about probably anywhere from six to $70,000 a job, cold turkey. I quit. I said, I'm done. They said, why? I said, I'm going to take up professional wrestling. So, um, they said I had a job when I come back, and I left. We packed our cars up. We packed the cars up, and we drove from the southeast all the way to Long Beach, California. Nice. And I went and I got training done. I did my first match with NWA Hollywood, which is where like Ric Flair, all the big boys started in NWA. After that first match, I got a call from the WWE. So. I did a lot of traveling with professional wrestling, WWE, um, a lot of training, all the big guys. I've done stuff with Mark Henry, the big show, um, training with the Usos, who's a rock's cousin, all those guys. William Regal was my original uh, trainer, who's a big, you know, 90s, 80s wrestler. And I just learned how to make people love or hate you on camera. Wow. How to look at them through the lens and make them pay attention. This whole who, 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 that whole thing, when you're scrolling down Twitter, what's the first thing you stop at when you see the camera doing all of this? So you're going to stop and look at it. So that's how my marketing goes. So all that stuff is getting people to look at you. And that's what WWE preaches. Look at the camera, make them believe in what you're saying and get them to listen to you. So after you take off this, you take off this, and if you were to look at me blind and listen and read to what I'm saying, you will get a ton of knowledge and stuff being taught to you. But only people that, I only, only want people that, that are willing to, to see through it, see the entertaining side of it, but also listen and take all that stuff. So I decided to quit um, wrestling um, at a certain age. I was getting too old. It was hitting me hard. And my wife also wanted to go back to school for her, for her um, industry. And I said, okay. So we went all the way to one of the most expensive places to live 
in the United States. Once again, I won't let that start out, but it was a struggle. The struggle was real, bro. Mm. So I went into the car industry and I put us through. I put us through school. Cash. Cash. Get wow. cash for it. So pay for a grad school in cash. Um, went back to Texas. And in this meantime, I'm like, Bitcoin is making me a bunch of money. Crypto is making me a bunch of money. So SHIB comes and SHIB actually... How, how, how long, let me stop. How long were you holding Bitcoin at that time to have realized gains? Uh, 2017, 2018. So you were holding first... for four, four years. Yeah, well, I was holding and didn't realize I was holding. Now, I was, <laughs> I was paying, people. <laughs> now, I was paying attention to the price and everything, but I did forget that I was holding that many Bitcoin. So I was kind of like outside in, like every now and then checking on what's going on. Um, my true knowledge on everything didn't come until like 2016, 2017, because I saw that mm. price going up and then I was like, okay. So about three years was me concentrating on, you know, my, you know, career and, and whatnot. It was a little less crypto. So 2016 comes around, it's going up. 2017 is going up parabolic. 2018, um, I do a XRP video. So I was trading XRP, took that from like 0.008 of a cent all the way to a dollar or something. Um, wow. I had I actually had the largest XRP video um, um, in all of crypto at that time during that whole run up. I had the large, I had the, I had almost like 180,000 views on the video in mm -hmm. almost a week because XRP was the hot thing on, 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 on the planet. I, at the time. I want to see you do that for Pulse Chain. That's what I want to see. <laughs> oh, we're just getting started. Wow. <laughs> that's the thing. People don't know it. People don't know my style. People don't know what I'm doing. So that's that's part of the hate too. And we'll we'll get to that. Um, but 2018 came in. Um, I was also one of the top Binance referrals because of that XRP video. Mm. So I was signing people under under Binance. I'm still getting paid by Binance for that year. Only thing is, I can't get to my money because I'm kicked off Binance because I'm in the United States. So I can't even take that money. That thing's just racking and I can't even touch it. So uh, uh, that one, all that money was coming from 2018. Anyone that trades under that account, is, I'm just free money coming in. So um, I got wrecked in 2018 with everybody else. Mm -hmm. So that happened. I saw hundreds of thousands of dollars go down to basically 10 grand. What happened to your psychology at that point? How were you did, still oh, here? How did I didn't you become have a mini any psychology. Whale? I didn't have any psychology. <laughs> I, I was just doing what everyone else was doing, was just trading, going. And that's where the Massey Hex and the Catality says, is like, oh, you're just going to. The problem is they didn't have someone like myself to teach me. So what had happened was at $10,000, I decided to go into ICO. They were allowing Americans to get in, and I couldn't get into any ICOs at that time. So I thought I was the best man on the planet. I knew what I was doing. That thing cut in half, fifty x right or fifty percent right off the bat. Right, lost, wrecked, right. Three thousand dollars now sitting on three thousand dollars. That chart still is wrecked. Wow. Um. So I go to how my wife. How do you wife. recover? Like, how you do you recover from I, that? I go. To, I go to my wife. I go to my wife. And I say, I want to put some more money in the crypto. <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> she was like, you were some, like, I'm not did seeing any money from this. She, yeah, she just thinks yeah. just gambling away everything. Like, <laughs> so I was like, listen, I was like, I got this. I'm going to do this. this is, I'm good for it. I'm good for it. Like, I'm, I'm going to make it happen. And she's like, no, you're not. Like, it, like you had all this money. You lost it all of it. Why are you going to do it again? I don't see nothing but bad things on crypto. <laughs> so she's like, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to prove myself. So that's the reason why I went into straight up hustle research mode. Oh. I had to prove myself to her. Not to her. Like, it wasn't that's what was going to do it. It was, all right, she doesn't think I can do it. She's thinking like everybody else is thinking traditionally that crypto is a scam, crypto is this. So I'm like, I'm gonna kill this game. I was like, okay, I see where everyone, like, I see how people think. I was like, I'm gonna kill this game. So what had happened was I would get home from work 
seven, eight o'clock. We'd have dinner. She'd go to sleep. And I would not, I would go right on the computer, learn how to trade, learn what the cycles were going. All this stuff that I teach out, I was doing day in and day out for two whole years, bro. How many hours do you think you spent oh researching? My gosh, bro. Like realistically, I, bro. no BS. I would say, because I lie to you not, it was at least every day, six days a week, four or five hours a day. Yeah. So let's take 54 times two times six. Just before I hit it big, 600, 700 hours easily. Wow. Easily, easily. It was, I was obsessed with it. And that's the thing, dude. A lot of people don't know, like college football scholarship to get there. I was obsessed. I was obsessed with being a college football player. Professional wrestling. I got there. I was obsessed. All I did was live in the gym and live in a in a dojo to, to train for three months and got called up. Then you tell me I can't do anything with, with crypto? Nah, 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 that's not going to happen. I'm obsessed with becoming a millionaire by the age of 40. Matter of fact, I'm going to do it a lot earlier just to prove all of you wrong. So that wow. that's how I that's how I am. That's my mentality. So I'm the same, ha- bro. What I'm happened was I put my time in, I put my hours in, and then when COVID happened, a little bit before COVID, I told my wife, I said, I'm taking all the money out of my Roth IRA because that's money that I put in. How did you that sell about- that to your to your fire roasted, bro? How did you sell taking yeah, out your retirement I told her, and go into crypto? I told her within two and a half years because I know the cycles and I know how this thing works now. Within two and a half years, I'll pay the house off. And was that the sentence that got her like with your conviction? Yep, because mm. that was a big bill. Um, we wanted a one and done house. When I lie to you, not it's like a castle. It is like a castle. Like it is part of a movie <laughs> thing comes out. It looks like a castle. So it was literally uh, what I wanted, and I wanted so a big. So when house. when you tell when you that? tell people you'll see me in the castle, like that's real. That's real. <laughs> <laughs> it is real. So so literally, like we saved up our money for years to have a one and done house that we always wanted. But I told her, I am going to pay it off in two and a half years. She said, I was like, watch. So what happens is I get out the money out. I put some in Bitcoin. I put some in Ethereum. I sprinkled something like Cardano. I was like a Cardano fan then. Um, I sprinkled some shit coins that I lost some of it and I probably shouldn't have done it. And then shit comes out. I was convinced Ooh, that Shib now we're getting to it. Now we're I was convinced to it. that Shib was the next Dogecoin. I've got tweets out there. When I bought in, I said I, I had I had trillions of Shib, trillions, Whoa, trillions, trillions, not hundreds of billions, not billions, trillions. I had no idea, but I was like, listen, I really believe in this narrative. And that tweet is out there. I've reposted that tweet many times where I said, it's going to be the next Dogecoin and it will be a top 100 coin. I'm calling it right now. That shit rugged. (laughs) (laughs) That shit rugged. No one's down. For six months, Wrecked, it rugged. Bro. It rugged. <laughs> it rugged. And I was like, nah, bro. Like, I believe in this. What, so when what you did your wife that, say? You ready for this? Did, did you she ready know? For this? Did nah, she know? I ain't telling none of that. Nah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> dude, 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 you're you're know, like, no, we're good, baby. We're good. Because I still have my Bitcoin. I still have my Bitcoin. I still have my Bitcoin, my Ethereum. But I was like, I don't know if I'm going to pay the house off. Bitcoin games. <laughs> You're making me cry, bro. <laughs> so, but I believed in it. I really did believe in it. And you ready for this? If you look at the intro of my of my my uh, YouTube channel, it says buying dips, and you see a little spike up. That's your boy. 
Oh, you mean you, you started it. buying the dip, forcing the chart up? I bought the dip well before that whole run up. So I bought in the beginning. I bought that thing. You think a million dollar market cap? Was no. I bought that dip in the hundreds of thousands of dollars market cap. Hundreds of thousands of dollars market cap. So when I bought it, did you dipped up and it didn't go anywhere for another two months. I said, Ugh. now I didn't have to buy that much to get to the trillions. I'm gonna let you know. I didn't have to buy that much. But what happened was February, January, February ish comes. And I'm walking the kids with the wife to the park. And all of a sudden, I look at my phone, check out my portfolio at the time. And all of a sudden, it said I had $50,000 worth of shit. Boom! Shares. Vindicated. I go, oh, damn, I just hit. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was hyped. Here's the issue. I don't do crypto on my phone. <laughs> I'm at the park. And this thing's pumping. To a fifty million dollar market cap. So actually, it was. Uh, hold, on, hold on, let me let me take that back. One of my wallets had fifty thousand dollars in market and and shit in it, and the one that I had on that phone is what showed fifty thousand. So I go, we got to go back to the to to the to the house, and she goes, "What do you mean?" I go, "You see how much I got here?" She's like, "Yeah." I was like. I need to sell something. I need to take some profits. So I need to get this thing. So we run back. Bam, bam. It's like 15000 now. In that oh. little bit of time, it dropped down to 15000 Oh. Seven. Eight. A couple days later, a couple weeks later, like six. Uh, and I'm like, dang. You're killing me, bro. I was all excited. Said, you know what? I said, you know what? I don't think this is over. I don't you had think conviction. This is over. I took money that I probably <laughs> would never put into a meme coin and I put it into shit. And that bad boy spiked a little bit, went down, down, like people were selling it off, and it went well above that $50 million market cap. Green green candles off the page. Damn. So I, I want to highlight something for any of y'all who have been able to follow this story. You need to learn from these big dogs who actually have made it. And I wouldn't exactly call you a big dog. You're like like uh, a mini whale. That's I say I would mini whale. You. I wouldn't mini say whale. myself. Yeah, I wouldn't say. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm, not, I'm not like, I ain't buying 800 billion worth of like selling 200 yeah, yeah, yeah. billion so, pulse nine there <laughs> i just want to highlight this for y'all we're in this l1 all right we're in this pulse chain hex game and we are trying to crush it okay and i want you to learn right now learn from this story play it back if you have to look at what the moon king had to go through in order to actually become a shiv millionaire if he didn't have king kong nuts and a hundred percent conviction and actually stuff more into DCAs at the bottom. Would you have ever gotten to where you are if you did Heck not act no. in all those ways? No way, no way. It takes it takes belief, but that's just a meme coin. And that's why I said, like, even with pulse chain, like you don't know the dips that I've been through. So when I see something mm. like this, I'm like, this shit ain't nothing. <laughs> Tell, tell my I've people. Like, this is weak sauce. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, I, you know what I did yesterday while the price went? I was celebrated that it hit, you know, over sack price. And then it went below sack price. You know what I did? I picked blueberries with my kid. <laughs> tell me. We went, to the, we went to the blueberry farm and picked blueberries yesterday. Like, Is it like, is it like, look, I'm from these streets, bro. I come from the hood, all right? I don't look like it, but I definitely 100% do. And I've seen some wild stuff. That like it gets your adrenaline going. Just looking at it down the strip, you're like, oh God. You're watching people get murked their whole life just wrecked. Right there. I've seen it a lot. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When you get when you see these war-torn savages just just murking fools up and your adrenaline soaks you and you're like, oh, I'm glad that ain't me. Like, whoa, because you're little yeah. and you can't, you don't, you know, you can't hang with that level of gangster. Like, I've been through that situation. Then you go to school and you see like a fist fight. 
between two dudes that's all weak, it other kids are freaking out. Oh, fight. And I'm just like, oh, this is kind of not that big of a deal. Yeah. Is not. it kind of like that? Like you went through such hectic war torn situations that when you see this pulse chain getting shaken out, it's like not that big of a deal for well, you. It, it helps that I'm still in profit. So it does help that. But even if mm. I wasn't, even if I wasn't, I, I I just wouldn't care. Like I do believe that pulse chain is the layer one for the next bull market. Why? Because I don't see anything out yet, and I do believe we're in a bull market already. Really? So, as history state, well, when I say we're in a bull market, like the a, low a is capitulating, the low. like once the level low happens, in my in my opinion, once the low happens, the bull market starts. It just is not an aggressive bull. It's a low capitulating Correct. back Correct. and forth one. When you mm -hmm. look at when you look at sixteen five on a chart five years from later, you would say, "Oh, the bull market started there." Because all you yes. see is crazy you know, what, candles that got. Even but when you look at it now, like it doesn't it. feel like we're in a bull market. No, it but, doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't feel, like, it right feel now, like a bull market, bro. <laughs> it doesn't. But remember, Rackham is still up 2x on his on his sacrifice price. 100%. So really, that is like the price that like really matters is what that, that sacrifice would put in. So when me, I see that, go ahead. Let me clear some uh, misinformation that's been like spread through the community. Like I've talked, I haven't talked to Rackham in a while. Much love, bro. Hope you're good. But like, I know that that wallet is over 32 people who all got together at a high level and saw way ahead of the curve and were 100% bullish on this chain. They were part of the game theory. Overwatch is all linked up at the very highest level. So I've personally heard from people very close to him that Rackham has not sold a single coin, but other people from his outfit have the lawyers distributed yeah. everything and they've, they've taken profit. So I don't know that for sure. Hit me in these comments if you know any different, but I did just want to know, like there's top wallets that are up there and there are a few, there are a few people. So it's not just one. So I just want to like, let everyone know, Hey, it's easy to hate on rack, but like, honestly, I, I still believe he's holding to his guns on what he said on hodling because he told me directly you need to hold for a minimum of two years lit do not f around he was like a hundred percent serious when i did talk to him so like Here's i just want to clear that up it it really and this is what i mean by like the hold your hand mentality you can let people know that but in the end you have to believe it mm. so if you don't believe it your psyche, your 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 two years is going to be rough, and yet you're probably not going to make it. Realistically, like you're probably not going to make it. You have to train your mindset to know that these cycles take time. On average, mm. it takes five to six months. Let me let me let me let me show you some some TA real quick to what I mean. So so you can see it while I'm, I'm telling you it. I love this comment. First time I've really listened to B Roots. Thanks for having him on. Great story. So knowledgeable. This is why I wanted you on because I want y'all to know your boy right here is 100% bullish on this chain. When I look at the crypto sphere, all right, there's over 16,000 crypto projects, over 2,000 on PulseX alone within the first two weeks. Over 2,000 tokens have been launched on this chain. When I look around at the entire crypto sphere, all right, as a coach, I try to have a zoomed in perspective so I can deep research on micro points, but I also zoom out to macro so I can have a proper tenured perspective. I don't want to get caught with my pants down. I want to be ready and secure in the decisions I make, especially financially. If you make a bad decision financially, you can ruin your whole life. A lot of the people I coach are ruined financially. They're practically suicidal. They've lost their families. They're on the edge, barely hanging on. They come to Coach Lit to try to get their self sorted. And I'm awesome at bringing them back. But part of bringing them back is helping them get secure financially. Because if you cannot secure your finances, it's like a hole in the bucket that's bleeding out your energy. And the more energy you have losing your system, it's harder to stand firm. One of the things Root said is that 
I had money while these dips were happening recently. So I'm in a lot better position. So if you don't have money and all your money is in this pulse chain right now and things are tanking or pulse X right now and things are tanking, you have to actually understand you're in a war torn situation. You have to have more conviction, more inner strength, more power from within you, more belief, more mathematical skills to understand micro, macro, the bigger picture. You have to understand a lot of factors in order to remain bullish on this chart right now. But I want you to know, as a deep researcher and as a coach in this game, covering Pulse Chain for two years, I don't see many other places that I want to put any money. I feel like this is the spot, a blossoming L1, the native gas token, absolutely in its infancy that skyrocketed to number four in four days and went to number two within a week. Number yeah. two blockchain in the entire world within one week. Then we're having some growing pains. I want y'all to know, I believe in this chain. I believe you're in the right place. Not financial advice, but I wanted Roots to get on here so you can hear the moon king. You can realize how to get to the moon. He just broke down so much of his story from telling his wife, getting into WWE, telling her, I'm going to get through it, getting into crypto in 2013, having a bull run, pass him by in Bitcoin, hold for four years till he starts seeing gains. Then he gets into SHIB and it absolutely murders him and he doesn't lose conviction. He doesn't give up on himself. He keeps going. He puts more in at a DCA. He grits his teeth. He takes his IRA, dumps it in. He had King Kong nuts, y'all. If you don't learn from that, you might not make it in this game. And I truly want all y'all to win. So this is why I brought him on. I brought him on so you can truly understand what it takes to make it in a bear market until we flip. Look at my last video. I believe there will be a point where we flip and the whales stop dumping, okay? But you have to make it through that point. And who better to bring on than the Moon King himself, who's actually done it? He's actually done it. So I really want y'all to learn from these people who've, who've been through these downs and they made it back up. I really believe we're in the right place. And when I look around at this whole crypto sphere, I don't know where else I would rather be. Like Roots, yeah. do you? Is there anywhere else you'd rather be than Pulse Chain? Like there's one layer one that I got into, but like. Eh. Like, <laughs> it's just like, I'm not feeling it the same way. So I'm not even that bullish uh, on that other one. So it's like, I got two, but this one is where I put my, you know, bread and butter in with it. You know, when I, when I had my shib, I'm going to tell you what I did. I had my shib and for my wife's birthday, I gave her a payoff amount of the house. What? About two years, two and a half years. And I said, House is paid off of. What what did that what was that conversation like? What did what did that feel like, bro? She didn't believe it. She didn't believe it. Because yeah. she went year, she went year not I don't blame her. Like I went high all this money and it went down. But there's one thing that she said. She's like, I didn't believe it, but I did believe in you. So, like, she doesn't believe in crypto. She thinks it's all, like, this just fake stuff that doesn't happen. And then once I started, like, your next birthday, here's a pool. Like, next birthday, first class flight to the Maldives. First class flight here. Here's this. Here's this. Oh, by the way, I want to put this much into a sacrifice. Huh? Well, I had to pay some stuff off to get that next level. Just like I had to be like, <laughs> I'm going to pay the house off. Now it's like, well, yeah, like, I mean, you know, it's all off. There's no risk. So now I want to, you know, put this much. And I basically sat her down and I said, I'm going for it. She goes, what do you mean? I was like, we didn't, you know, if I go to zero, if I get scammed, we won. What do you, that's what? it. We we have no. If I were to get scammed on my sacrifice, I said in my mindset, we won. We don't have a house payment. We have zero bills. We got money to do whatever we want, and we're young. But I want to go for it. 
And she was like, what do you mean go for it? Like, I was like, this is how much I plan on putting into this sacrifice. I don't know what's going to come out of it. I really believe, but this is what I want to do. And she kind of freaked out a little bit, but I was like, listen, I've hit it once and I've proven to you that I could hit it. Allow me to prove to you a second time. Wow. And I said, our kids are going to be retired. Their grandkids are going to be retired. And their grand grandkids are going to be retired. And it's going to be because of me. And let me do that. This, I got to gotta stop y'all. Before, before I had uh, the Moon King on this show, we had a couple private conversations. This is what we talked about. And when I heard this, I was like, oh my God, this dude is in crypto to help his family. Every one of my channel OGs is in this game to help themselves and their family. They want to make this world a better place. I, You see this comment? 100%. I stand for these little dudes who are struggling, just trying, fighting, scratching, clawing their way to get out of the slave system. I come from the slave system, and it sucks. It absolutely sucks. It rips the soul out of your body and it makes you a different man. And when you walk in a room to be there for your family and your soul has been stripped from you by the slave system and there's no end in sight, it is horrifying. All right. Hey, I've, hey, I've Rich Wealth, there. There, there is a comment that I see that I want to say. He said, don't retire your kids. You'll ruin them. You're absolutely right. They are going to work for it. They're not going to know that they're going to be retired, but you know, they, they pretty much are going to be set. I, 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 they will be set, but they are going to work for it one thousand percent. They're not going to just be handed down. I don't. I don't do hand. I don't even do hand me downs to my followers on crypto. I definitely ain't giving my hand me downs to kids. <laughs> but uh, but uh, when I did that, you know, I put the amount in, and then you know, when the launch finally came two years later, she's like, "Well, like, are we there yet?" I'm like, "No, you need to be. You need to be patient. I gave you a timeline." That's when that's when that happens. So you can't become impatient now just because it's out. I was like, I'm not touching a set. I haven't touched a set. I've only gained that full shape. I've only made full shape. I haven't touched a single penny. Split up in wallets. I ain't got nothing like. Have you even... been growing your pulse chain bag with with my Epic pulse chain bag is bigger? My pulse chain bag is bigger than what did I started with. Absolutely. Good for you, bro. Good for so, you. A lot me, of smart can, people is like that. Can I share my screen for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's do it. So this is my mentality that I tell my wife that I can tell all you guys. Ethereum came out and the sacrifice price was 30 cents. When it came out, it came out at 10x and just dumped. But it did launch at a 10x above where people yes, got in. 33, so $3 was their 10x. You're going to understand why I say 10x is when Ethereum, when I see Pulse Chain coming out. Uh, I think Pulse Chain sees a 10x for its sacrificers like October, November ish, because that's what markets do. Um, it came out one, two, three, four, five, six. The 10x came back six to mm. seven months. I guess you could say this is set. Like, like right there is a 10x. So, like, basically, right there, 10x again. So it took them six months to 10x their 30 their 30 cent their 30 cent uh evaluation or their 30 cent what do I want to say the 30 cent um sacrifice crystal. Here's the next one. Solana. 22 cents was their number. Mm. August in 2020. It came out in April. So April, May, June, July, August. Five months for them to get their 20, their 10x. Let's go to Hex. You got to put Vision. You got to find the I love this stuff, bro. This is like you're just breaking it down for everyone to see. We got to find their V1 chart right here. Is this the V1 chart? Yes. Okay. Oh, right here. 
So the average price of hex was basically, you know, that that's hard to come about. But let's just say you decide to buy right off the get go at 0 0.0003 is the high of this candle. One, two, three, four. So four months it took for this person to 10x their 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 bag. One, two, three, four. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five months. It took five months for that person to tell you next to the bag. We came out in May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Five to six months based off of Hex, based off of Solana, based off of Ethereum. That it seems to me that a lot of coins that want to wash you out in the beginning, five, six months later, you're sitting at a 10 next on that sacrifice bag or that ICO bag. So when I see something like that, it makes me say, we're going to see that 10x in about October me. and November. So I'm not anything in between. I'm just like, eh, let's go pick some blueberries. Let's do it. <laughs> like, Roots, I, tell I, me okay. about Pulse X. Westcott has said this a couple times. I want to make sure you get some love. Much love, brother Westcott. Yeah. Tell yeah. me about Pulse X exactly in the same regard because Pulse Chain, we just broke it down. I absolutely love what you just said. And I think if all y'all can focus on what he did, that is the alpha. That is the alpha in this video that it will blow doors and change your life forever if you get what he just broke down. Talk to me about Pulse X. Pulse X, um, personally, I don't think it does what Pulse Chain does as far as X's. But I do think that it surprises people. Because cryptos will surprise you to the downside, which you're seeing with both sets, but it'll also surprise you to the upside, um, which we haven't seen with Pulse X yet. So there are a lot of people selling. My Pulse X bag isn't as big as my Pulse Chain bag, but I have a pretty nice, I still have a bigger what, Pulse X What bag. kind of Pulse ratio do you have? Are you like five to one, like five? Uh, that I won't, to that I won't give out. Okay. I won't give, I won't give that out. But I will tell you this, um, I did have more Pulse X to my Pulse X bag than I sacrificed. What is it? Wait, I, that was confusing. I have more Pulse X in my oh, bag. You've than gained I, since SAC. You've I've been trading SAC. and you, okay. Yes. So you wouldn't do that if you were not bullish on Pulse X. You wouldn't do that. Um, yeah. Is it yeah, what is I, is it the buy I, I and think burn? Is it the community? Pulse, what is no, it? No, no, it's not the it's not the buy and burn. What so, is it? I, I think a lot of people are preaching that. To me, that's that's yeah. that's minimal. It's not that. <laughs> Everyone I loves mean, the buy. I love the. Buy I know. And burn. I get Tell it. I get why. it. I understand Tell why. why. <laughs> I understand why. But buy and burns is like if you hang out in the meme coin space. Um, what they have is these little like, and I only got like another 10 minutes, 10, 12 minutes. So I'm just gonna finish this up, but. With buy and burns to me is like when they do like a a a, a um, competition, a buying competition, and they'll say, "Oh, we'll buy and burn this amount," and it just becomes exit liquidity wow. um, for people to dump into. So I don't I don't look at the buy and burn as the, uh, this big bullish event. It is buy pressure. There's the thing. Over time, it becomes bullish. How long does that time get? That's where I don't know. I personally don't know. I do think that um, I do think that exchanges, I do think that that other DEXs that come on part takes some of that volume away from PulseX. But my game plan with PulseX is a little bit longer. Now, yeah. there will be a portion of my PulseX that I do sell at a certain point. But my moon bag is at a point where I think crypto takes off to where I'm wrong. Now, earlier I told you, I don't think crypto will be here in 15 years. So for those five, 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 it might be like, you're retarded. Like, you're, you're crazy. I didn't say that word. I don't want to say that word. I said, like, you're okay. crazy. I said, like, you're crazy. Um, but I have 15-year stakes. 
I've got 14 year six. I've got 13 year six. I got 12 year six, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and right now. Why? Because I'm no, I might be wrong. What if I'm wrong? I'm an idiot. So when I cash out, I cash out now and people like call me a trader. Well, I'm a genius right now. Why? If I want to, I can buy the hex way lower because you were just hating on me this whole time for selling. I'm a genius right now. But I would be an idiot if I didn't set myself up for later. So I win now and I will win later. I'm a genius if crypto ends. I'm a genius now. Because back then you would look like, man, I should have sold something. Man, I should have paid this off. Man, I got too greedy. And it mm. ended. Now I look like the genius one. But I would look like an idiot if I sold everything. And then that person that staked it 15 years was like, ha, you sold all your stuff. And I'm just killing the game with my 5555. 100% correct. But I win no matter what. And that's how I set all my long-term investments in. Like, I've got Hex. Really, my stakes are front-loaded to the first six years. So I'm taking it all back the first six years. But my year seven through 15, it ain't nothing cheap, but it's nothing expensive. But if Hex is still going up 15 years from now, I'm making more money than if I was making it now. But I set myself up for that. My you, pulse chain is eight years. I have an eight-year plan for my pulse chain. I got you. You you basically set up a multi-pronged approach for your wealth generation. You set in short-term goals where you allowed profit taking so that you and your family now. are good now. Then yep. you allowed six months, one year, two year, five year, all the way out to eight years on pulse chain and all the way up to 10 to 15 years in hex. But what you did is you took that amount that you're putting forward and you lowered it and lowered it. So the amount that's very long is not a big part of your bag. It's a much smaller correct. portion. Because is that correct? as crypto, crypto is parabolic. So it goes past the all-time high where you're still killing it. So let's say I have $1,000. Let's just say I have $1,000 real quick. I'll make this real fast. And 500, I cash it all out. Whatever that 500 was worth, the 500 turned into, to, let's say, 50 million. Very bullish prediction, but I'm just, <laughs> just just putting numbers out there. So at the top, it's worth fifty million, and I took out half of it. Now I've got twenty five billion. When it goes past that top, usually anywhere from a three to four x past that top, I now have twenty five million. And then when it doubles, I got fifty million. When it doubles again, I got you know seventy five. It just keeps going. I don't need that much money on that other flip side of that to do that. So if it keeps going, I'm killing it. If it for some reason ends and, and Gensler wins, I killed it. So I can't lose. And that's my mentality. Uh, so, so, so that's how I set myself up. The people who are just getting in and holding. now. So basically, you just explained how the legacy information that I was taught to get into crypto and just hold for five years minimum, it doesn't make sense. That's why, because yes. you have to have profits now. You have to have profits in three months, six months. You have to have profits a year and two years. And if you don't, you can just set yourself up for just to lose everything or regulations come in or you, you don't sell, you're locked up. Like there's there's ways where you get wrecked by the nature of your trading psychology. You, and you're you saying this? make a ladder. You ready for this? Yeah. If I wasn't in the position that I am, I see why people are selling right now. I don't have any bills. I'm good. And that's the mentality I told you earlier. Like it, it's different. So it's harder. You have to, you have to witness that one time to feel how I feel now. So you have to get on those stripes. You have to get that ride up, take those profit, feel good about yourself. So in the next cycle, you can sit back and be like, I'm good because I have no problems. I have no issues. But when you set yourself up, when you invest too much, you need to sell that for something. You put yourself in a situation. Why? Because you probably have loans somewhere. You probably owe money to someone. So therefore, you're a slave to the lender 
and you know you're on your back. Now your wife is on you on your back, like, hey, we got these bills to pay. What are you gonna do? It's been two years, you haven't brought any money from the sacrifice. You need to sell this now to pay for whatever, 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 whatever. And that's tough. So you have to sit down, grow those balls, and literally <laughs> go through that cycle like I did with Shiv and just like hang in there and be like, I'm good. I'm good. And then when you get that, you can take some of that out and then you do whatever you want. As long as you're being responsible, don't be stupid, but you know, do what smart, pay off the things that's not going to, you know, affect you later. So then when it goes up and goes down and crashes, you're just like, whatever. I'm cool because I ain't got no bills. I'm enjoying myself. I'm not yelling at people, calling people a scammer, calling this because I'm good. All is good. And then when it goes back up, you're even better. So, so but, we, we have to wrap it up here in a minute. I just yeah. want to say thank you for coming on the show and sharing your story. And everyone has a chance to see beyond the veil of hatred that hopefully they can get past that they hold for you if they hold it for you. They're going to be able to see why I really like you and appreciate you in this space. And I want to close this with, with some closing thoughts, okay? Mm -hmm. I am here to moon run this L1. That is my belief. I am 100% dedicated to Pulse Chain. I have made an entire channel about it for two years. Every, everyone I've talked to, I have tried to highlight all the incredible opportunities. I'm not a financial advisor, just a dude who absolutely feels that this is where you want to be in this crypto game. Can you, can you tell the people where, what, what it's like to be here now, what it's going to take to make it? And can I just want to say thank you, first of all, for working with me to get this blockchain into the stratosphere. Because whatever yeah. anyone says about you, you love this chain. And you want to see it crush it. So everyone here and everyone who's going to watch this, I want you all to know the Moon King is a Pulse Chain friend. The Moon King is helping spread awareness to this chain where no one knows about it. I want you all to hear that again. His role is like a bridge maker. I am like a bridge maker. Together, we, are ha we have each other's back and we're building bridges into new areas new mansions of thought in the crypto space where people have never come to. And we're contacting people. We're onboarding areas that have never been touched. And that's what this chain needs right now. It doesn't need bullish streams to hexagons who already sacrificed two years ago. It needs bullish streams with facts Good on people. facts to new communities who know nothing about Pulse Chain. And that is where I'm going to start taking my channel. I decided recently I'm ready to shift the ball. I'm, I'm the first Pulse Chain channel. So I have to make the first step. And I decided I'm going to start reaching out to communities, other people, other bulls, other areas in the game, people who aren't even in crypto. I'm going to start reaching out to get them onto this L1. And guess what? It's an incredible opportunity right now to get in. We still have a few months to pack the house before what B Roots was talking about happens in November, hopefully. So yeah. I just want to say that we literally are on the same page and I see you, bro. I got nothing but love and I really appreciate you here on this chain, helping us bridge gaps where other people can't reach. Yeah, I, I, I first things before I end, because um, I didn't really get finished my PulseX thing. I do think PulseX, you know, if, if all goes well, that second cycle is going to be massive for sure. I think it's going to have a nice little run up for the first cycle um, just on the hype of it alone. Mm. Uh, but I think the second cycle is really where it shines and really like takes people by surprise uh, based on all the buying and burning from the bear market. Yeah, I remember people are taking profits from the bear market and that's when PulseX actually shines. Mm. It'll shine on the run up. It'll shine way even more on the run down, not shine up in price, but taking all that supply off the market. And then when it goes back up again, it shines even more and that allows it to go parabolic. So that's just, just based off of physics. <laughs> physics <laughs> there. But um, all, outside of that on myself, you know, just speaking to the people who don't like me, the people who don't trade, 
Um, and it's fine. Trading is not for everybody. So please don't think that I think you're an idiot or stupid if you don't trade and try to make more money or make more pulse chain or however you do things. Um, it's not for everybody. You're either a high risk. We're all high risk because we're in this we're in this industry already. What I do with these meme coins is super high risk. It is. That's why yeah. I have an hour long video to like teach you how to better your chances, not how to to win, not just to win, but to better your chances. You're going to get rubbed. You're going to lose money. But I present a video that teaches you how to increase your chances to be way better off than 99.9% .9 of people doing the exact same thing as you. Um, so that's what I do. But I'll also be willing to bet that I am probably top five, if not top five, top 10 people that talk about Pulse Chain outside the community that brings yes. people in. I guarantee you I'm probably top five. I would probably be willing to say that. So the amount of people that have came in and know about Pulse Chain, I can't guarantee they all bought, but they know. Now that they know, I'm going to tell you one thing in crypto. People chase green candles. Mm -hmm. They might not tell you they chase green candles. Mm -hmm. They might hate on it now and not tell you when they get in, but they will chase green candles. So there's 53,000 people out there that know about Pulse Chain that's outside the ecosystem. They will chase green candles. Because oh, I, I love the this, bro. industry as they oh, are. Oh, you're getting me lit. And I see them buying green candles all the time. So <laughs> when I get loud, when it happens, best believe they will chase green candles. So and I went from 2,000 followers all the way to 53,000 in a matter of two years. And they all are definitely not hexagons. I can tell you that right now. Majority of them are not hexagons. Majority of them are DGENs in hex or <laughs> DGENs outside of it and just killing it, whether in their own territory. But now, they will chase green candles. How important are DGENs in this space trading new oh, points? Oh, oh. Like, let me preface it. I did metrics. Hit me in these comments if I'm wrong. We have to wrap it up here in a minute. Yeah. But I just want to end it on this. I have understood from my own research, and I want to hear your point of view on this. Mm -hmm. I believe my research showed it's 70 to 80% of on-chain volume, meaning day-to-day -day trading on a blockchain, any L1 where trading's happening, 70 to 80% are meme coins. Do, do you, I, I, got around, I got around 60 Okay, it could, be, 60. it could be high. It could be higher, but it's um, still it's still over half. It's sixty to seventy percent. Here, here's the thing: you better if you're in Pulse Chain. If you don't like meme coins, it's time to keep your mouth shut. Wow, it's that simple. Because, because whether you it like it or volume, not, which burns the gas, the, which pumps Pulse Coin. What's on Ethereum is literally what's what's going to be on BSE and, 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 and Pulse Chain. And if you're really bullish on, on this whole ecosystem of crypto and you really believe in it, well, what you believe in is that 60% or higher is all about meme coins. So it's that simple. So right now, as we speak, what's really bringing people numbers into Pulse Chain, I'm going to tell you right now, the volume, we might look at the volume, the volume is Hex, Inc., Pulse X, Pulse Chain. Absolutely. That's the volume. You know why the volume's there? Because most of it's hexagons and people that sacrifice. That's the reality. The numbers are the meme coins. The amount of people coming in trading are the meme coiners and the traders and, and whatnot. They want to get some, some, some Pulse Chain, but you can see the numbers are those. When the bull market is here, Pulse chain's probably going to be labeled as the shitcoin chain. <laughs> but you know what? That's it awesome. doesn't matter because all the, the majority, yes, are going to be shitcoins, but you're going to have those projects that are good. The majority of Ethereum is shitcoins, but you true. have those projects that are and, good. And it's we're a that fork. Simple. That's just what it is. And, and we're a fork. fork so is. why would we be different? We're a fork of ETH. So, so I do think. I, you have to you do have to acknowledge it, accept it, 
you don't have to believe in it. Maybe you don't push people over there to it. But the people that are going to make that coin burn, they're not in liquid loans. The people that make that coin burn are not in Pulse X. The people are, oh, they're, they're in Pulse X and Pulse Chain because if they trade millions, hundreds of millions, for sure it's going to burn. But the people that are in like um, um, fiat, maybe, maybe a little bit more than like a like a Ave or like a like a like a liquid loans. But anything that's that's big, if there's not worldwide adoption, it ain't. It's not those utility projects, and that's why I always will say memes are greater than utility when it comes to money and when it comes to volume. Memes will be greater than utility. And as Pulse Chain gets bigger and bigger, so comes the devs. And like I said, majority of the devs are in meme coins. So wow. it is what it is. Those are the facts. You can't hide from the numbers. It is what it is. Right now, Pepe is outdoing a lot of different freaking... Pepe on Pulse Chain is killing it when it comes to volume and stuff like that. For a meme coin, putting up 500K in the beginning, crazy. It's going to be up there. There's going to be a meme coin in the top 10. Guarantee it. Always is, always will be. Um, you, you've ball, given me a lot balls. to think about being the Pulse Chain Super Bowl, only wanting people in a stable blue chip. I'm really going to have to think about adopting meme coins into my mindset. I really have, I've coached people who got wrecked and they've ruined their lives going all in on a meme coin. Maybe I can have you back and you can break down exactly how to trade meme coins to minimize yes, wreckage because yes. i don't there, want any of my people just yeah. getting in meme coins and losing everything i really just don't want that there there is a fomo to that so we yeah. are in a fomo industry so there is a fomo to that but you, and you got to be careful but um it can turn you from rags to riches but you you gotta have a plan you can't just be going in you gotta have a plan with pulse chain you gotta have a plan with pulse x you gotta have a plan with hex you gotta have a plan with bitcoin you gotta have a plan with ethereum and you better damn have a plan with a meme coin yeah and i'm not talking long-term plan you better have a short-term plan like like an hour two hours three hours from when you get in you need to have a medium-term plan and then you have a long-term plan if you really believe in that meme coin so um I'm, it's a I'm dangerous, it's a dangerous sport on. it's a dangerous sport but it can you can you can win I'm going to have you back on to break all that down. And I really just want to say thank you for being here. And thank you for being a bridge to Pulse Chain where other people have no clue about it. And you're onboarding them in. I see your value. I see you, bro. Nothing but love. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to have you on again where you can break all this stuff down further and deeper. And tell people where they can find you. Anyone who doesn't know you from my channel, let them know where they can find you before we wrap it up. Yeah. At IMB Roots on Twitter, as it says right there. And then also Crypto Kings 888 on YouTube, uh, where we have live streams every Monday and um, and Thursday. And then on my Twitter, I have Shill Tank, where we have people come and pitch to us. And that is on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And as I said earlier, if you're on Pulse Chain, you're a dev, come over to Pulse Chain. Um, if you're not on Pulse Chain, come over to Pulse Chain. If you want to sponsor Shill Tank and get yourself out there, Half price, bang. So you're on Ethereum, paying full price, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, brother. I really appreciate it. If if this is a two-hour interview, it might be a little long for people, but you know what? If you go back and you listen to this, go on a drive, go walk in nature, put this thing on and listen to his story and listen to his conviction, listen to everything he's been through in his life, and you're going to see what it takes to make it in this crypto game. And if you Absolutely. can apply that to Pulse Chain right now, You literally, not financial advice, but you can put yourself on the path to never work again money. And that's what I want for y'all. I want all these little dogs to become big dogs. All right. I'm from these streets. I know what it's like to struggle. And I, I devoted my life to getting out, fighting, biting, clawing, scratching my way out through hard work to not give up on the good man that I am inside, to not let my heart get tarnished and give up. I fought to be here right now. And I know all of y'all have too. So I want to just be a voice of reason in a world of chaos, have a plan, learn from the moon king, learn from people who've made it and apply their same strategy. Thank you so much for everything you shared, bro. Much love. We'll talk to you soon. Until the next time. Peace.